Welcome back, everybody, to the Renaissance Humanism podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Riley. In today's episode, I will be discussing why the Russian Federation may lose its territory of Kalingrad. Now, as you can see now, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, uh, the Russian Federation owns the territory of Kalingrad, and that's situated between Lithuania and Poland. The reason why the Russians could potentially lose this territory is due to the war in Ukraine, which means that the Russians are deploying its troops, deploying assets to try and conquer that country, bring that country into Russia by capturing territory such as Ukraine, I mean Crimea in 2014, and other territories such as Donetsk, Manitopol, and uh, Kremenskosk. I apologise with the uh, pronunciations. But with that military assets there, Russia can't deploy military equipment, he can't deploy its soldiers into holding other Russian territory. The best way to think of Russia is a giant empire, and it's an empire that has been slowly been crumbling since the collapse of the Soviet Union back in uh, 1990. Also, Russia has the issue of the Far East as well, as well, with the Chinese using the ethnic Han Chinese, his, na his native population, which makes up around about 97, 98% of the Chinese population, moving to Russian territory, wishing to recapture territories in uh, Manchuria. Because Greater Manchuria used to be part of the Qing Dynasty that ruled China from 1644 until the Chinese Revolution of 1911. So China wants that territory back. Also in the Far East as well, has got an incredibly small population of around 10 million people. So it's tiny. And China with a population of around 1.4 billion people, though it has been down since probably around about around a billion now, could be less, could be more. But due to the sheer size of the Chinese population, it can use the population to settle in other countries and other regions to dominate that region politically. The Chinese have done this with Tibet and Xinjiang by having ethnic Han Chinese moving to those regions and those regions over time becoming distinctively rather than native Tibetans or native Muslim populations, they're becoming distinctively Han Chinese with the Han Chinese culture as well. So that's what the Chinese are doing. And that's why there's a good chance that the Russians could lose Greater Manchuria and the Russia's Far East as well. So the potential that Russia could be reduced from being what it is today being massive to being predominantly existing on the western part of Russia, where the majority of ethnic Russian population lives, because Russia is also a multi-ethnic, multicultural empire, and it's an empire that is collapsing and degrading due to its democratic crisis and the breakdown in technical education going as far back as the 1980s. And Russia has had a sizable population birth rate going for over 40 years as well. So it's always compounding problems that's weakening Russia's ability to maintain its empire. And the, war in U and the war in Ukraine is not helping things as well. The war in Ukraine itself was purely planned. The, the people in Moscow most likely believe that Ukraine would just fold the same way that Afghanistan did in 2021. Because people got to remember the United States of America fought a 20 years war to try and make Afghanistan into a um, society similar to the West, which clearly failed. Um, and because of that failure, I I believe that the Russian military, the Russian political thinkers, people like the people like Melinda Putin, would have thought what happened in Afghanistan would be repeated in Ukraine, in Kiev. That didn't happen as well. Also, the army that invaded Ukraine was tiny, it was small, it wasn't big enough to actually conquer the country. For example, when the Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa in 1941. Five million Germans invaded Ukraine and one million stayed behind just occupy that territory. So on those kind of scales, the Russians are not actually putting their full weight, probably due to corruption as well, because estimated that at least a third of the Russian military budget that should have been spent on procuring weapons and equipment was actually going to its, you know, into the ministry's pockets as well, used for corruption. So that's another reason why that failed as well. Now, as for Kaliningrad, they've had a recent referendum where one-fifth of the population voted to actually leave the uh, Russian Federation. Obviously, this isn't a majority, but 72% of those people that voted voted to leave the Russian Federation as well. Uh, Kaliningrad is also 
Russia's only warm water port in the Baltic Sea all year round, because it's also of major strategic importance for the Russian Federation. Also from Kaliningrad, nuclear weapons could be launched at all of the European capitals. So that makes it a uh, geographical importance for the Russian Federation and a major threat to all other European nations as well. Uh, that pretty much covers today's episode. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you found this episode informative and insightful. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, peace out.